Hi there, Green Thumb Gardener here today, and today I'm going to be talking about uh, fencing in Hawaii, uh, in particular on lava or rock. So um, putting in a fence on rock isn't easy. Uh, there's uh, re real, really no easy way to go about it. I mean, uh, well, this I, I figured was the best way was to use uh, Helco or the big telephone poles in the corner for corner supports because it cut down my cost so I didn't have to put in you know H bracing or uh, corner bracing um, which usually uses uh, three or more pieces of wood um, so this one I only had to get one piece of wood and put it in the corner and uh, the rock is so hard here that uh, you know uh, one hole uh, could take a day or it could even uh, the one right here that we're filling up that one took four hours just to, uh, to dig and uh, then uh, once you uh, make sure that it's plumb and level then uh, you basically uh, put in some big rocks in there and uh, you know to help stabilize it for when you put in the cement uh, you know after you throw in the rocks double check it and uh, make sure that it's plumb and uh, then uh, yeah you uh, mix up your cement and put it in um, but the first things that you want to do are you want to get your corner post put in and you want to uh, run the line from the corner post to the other corner post. Uh, that way your fence is going to be straight. And uh, so uh, here we're using a forklift uh, with a water tank inside to fill up the wheelbarrow that, um, you know, has a cement. Uh, we used uh, Quickrete, the 80-pound bags, and we used about... Uh, four, uh, three, four, or five bags, uh, depending on the size of the hole that we dug. This one was, uh, I wasn't sure what size post it was going to be. He said it was a big post, so we dug that hole really big. Uh, this one took us, uh, you know, four hours. And, uh, and uh, since we put the other rocks in there, you know, we should also uh, go in there and uh, use a stick and kind of poke around in there and make sure that the cement gets inside all the crevices uh, so it's uh, really hard and then uh, once we run our line you know then we uh, spray uh, every 10 feet we put in a, a T post every 10 feet and uh, when you're using the rock drill uh, you're you're gonna have to get a generator and a rock drill and uh, basically uh, you go in and you go out and uh, you know sometimes you gotta uh, you gotta go out a lot more than you go in uh, sometimes because uh, otherwise it just uh, really compacts the uh, the, so the the rock and uh, you could even get your uh, drill stuck in there and uh, you know that uh, that's not fun uh, taking it out so it's always better to uh, drill in a little bit drill out you know uh, keep on going in and out and uh, that way uh, it, uh, you don't get your drill stuck um, you know, there's a, sometimes there's a compressor and you could even blow the air. And then, um, then here we have our T post pounder and, uh, we're pounding it in, into the ground and you want to get it, uh, here we left the flange on and, uh, that way it has the best stability. Uh, sometimes you can't always get the flange on and you might have to hit those off. Uh, it adds a little more support if the flange is on, but it, uh, works out better in the long run and here we're using an ATV to move ar around some of the stuff we also got a wheelbarrow uh, but that's for mixing cement and uh, here we got one of the big Helco corner posts it was from a telephone pole that fell down and uh, we just chopped it up and uh, you know now we're using it for corner posts and here we're just securing it to the ATV so that we could drag it uh, around the property it's about uh, 200 feet to the other side of the property line or to the other to the side where we're fencing we're only fencing in one acre and uh, it's about uh, 200 feet long so uh, having a uh, ATV like this really helps and makes a difference because uh, these poles are heavy especially the first one we put in oh my god you know it had to be uh, you know probably like 200 pounds or something and uh when, when i'm all good and done uh with all the posts i'm gonna put some uh henry's roofer on the top some tar 
and uh, just to help seal it in so it doesn't uh, get um, waterlogged or anything. And then it should last for years and years, you know. Um, and then it'll be good to even hold uh, buffalo inside there. Here we're knocking off the the flange because uh, the the rock here was just so hard. It was the blue rock, and uh, you know it just uh, it wasn't gonna go in there. So then here uh, we're gonna uh, start putting up the fence here because we got the posts in now. Uh, we put a uh, a big uh, post like that that you have to use a jackhammer for and you have to keep on dropping it in and pulling it out dropping it in pulling it out because you have to keep on taking out the rocks as well um, so and it was 95 pounds so uh, it, it was uh, quite a lot of work but you want to do that every hundred feet and uh, that way it'll be real stable and uh, the corner posts are the most important but um, I recommend putting one every hundred feet and then uh, 10 feet for every T post and uh, I, I raised it up a little bit higher the we put uh, some hog fencing and the hog fencing it uh, you know it w I put my foot under it so that uh, when we uh, run when we have the fence uh, I could uh, run it's not touching the ground and then I could put on the bottom a strand of barbed wire and uh, what that is going to do is uh, it's going to keep the fence from rusting because, uh, you know, it rains so much here that things rust very easily. And if you have the fence sitting on the water like that or touching the very bottom, it's, it's going to rust. And then you're going to have to replace your whole fence where if you would have just lifted it up a little bit, say, uh, you know, two two inches or so, then, uh, then you could run just one strand of barbed wire on the bottom and... Uh, then you won't have any problems with the uh, pigs eating your pineapples or whatever you're gonna plant. And uh, then, uh, then you use these staples to secure the fence. Uh, you know, you you want to secure the fence to the corner post first, and then uh, make sure it's secure. And uh, then uh, then you want to tighten it up and uh, take out all the slack. And uh, we had to wait maybe uh, three or four days before we actually uh, uh, pulled the fence because we needed the cement to dry. It's quick creep, but you know it has a the longer that it cures, the better. And uh, I thought it was a little too green to do it the next day, so uh, we gave it a, a couple of days. And here we got it up, and uh, now we just uh, got to secure uh, the fence to the T post. And here, uh, he's, uh, H is using a nail and, uh, just, uh, yeah, uh, just securing it just like that. And, uh, you want to secure it in at least three places and, uh, then, uh, then, yeah, it should be. And then, uh, then we're going to put on the gate too. Here's the barbed wire. We, uh, just strung the barbed wire by hand. We didn't, uh, uh, we, we did use a chain pole, um, but, uh, uh, mainly by hand is how that was done just hand tight and uh, yeah it, it worked good uh, I ended up buying the seven foot posts because they were on sale at Dale or at Dale and um, I don't know uh, so I said okay yeah I'll get the seven uh, I guess what most people use around here is the the six but um, I don't know I guess the six is uh, more expensive it's like 12 bucks or something and so I didn't get the six, I got the seven. Uh, I, I didn't really know what the difference was. So instead of just putting uh, one strand of barbed wire, I put two uh, just to make it look a little better, I guess. Uh, otherwise it would have looked kind of funny with half the post sticking out with nothing on it, I think. Um, and then here we're uh, using a drill to uh, drill in and you could see how he kept on backing in and out and uh, then we put the fence on and you want to drill it uh, on the inside of the post and then you want to secure it on, uh, you want it uh, facing down on the bottom and up on the top so then it locks it in and uh, that way uh, you could adjust the fence or, or the gate like that as well. So uh, yep, you should be able to uh, hold water buffalo in there now and uh, now you know how to build a fence on rock.
But uh, that's how you gotta build fences here. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I like to just be able to put a shovel in and stuff. Uh, but my other friend, he has some, some. Uh, he has a lot of deep soil and stuff, and he has a problem just keeping his fence up because uh, it's just so soft. All right, happy gardening.